Let's see Isaiah. Hosea chapter 4. Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the, this is all about what the Lord said. This is not Hosea. He's just obeying God. I mean this this is a rough book. Ye children of Israel. Okay, so this is written to Israel. The northern tribe. Judah should pay attention too. Because what we just read in Leviticus 26 is happening when we read Ezekiel and Daniel. And when it says, and they shall pray and, and uh, turn their uncircumcised heart to seek God, that was Daniel. What we're reading Hosea is that they're not going to be paying for their sins yet. God is just beginning Leviticus 26. For the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Uh oh. Because there is no truth. Here's the condition. America has no truth. You speak the truth, you become an oddball, an outlaw. You, you're, you're called names. You're biased. You're prejudiced. You're judgmental. No mercy. Well, isn't that what God said over here? That you, you're to name one of your children. I'm not going to show you mercy. Why is God not going to show them mercy? Because they're not showing mercy. You know, judge not least you be judged. And when you read the next verse, which I can't quote, but I can turn to it. For what judgment you meet, it will be meet unto you. If I show people mercy, God is going to show me mercy. If I judge people harsh, God is going to judge me harsh. So since these people are not showing no mercy, God is not going to give them no mercy. Nor knowledge of God in the land. Now that's important. Because we're going to read in a few chapters about knowledge. The knowledge addressed in chapter 4 is the knowledge of God. What do you know? There is no knowing of God in Israel. You know, America is not there. <clears throat> if, you give, if the Lord tarries a few years, a decade maybe, 15 years, she will have no knowledge of God of the Bible. Very few churches have God in them, even though they're a church and they preach God. They don't have the God of the Bible. By swearing. That's making oaths they don't pay. Oaths they don't bound to. They sign a, a mortgage paper and they don't pay it. They say I do to marriage vows and don't continue to death. They make oaths to God and they don't apprehend it. Lord, if you get me out of this, I'll preach and I'll do whatever. And they don't do it. Because a jailhouse religion becomes a battlefield religion. That's what that's called. And lying. And killing. You know what God's doing here? He names the sins. And he doesn't give them little pretty little names, bow ties and sweaters and little outfits. And stealing. And commits adultery. Well, we read that, that in chapter 3. That is the condition of Israel. They break out. And blood touches blood. Leviticus 20, 16, number 35, verse 3. There is moral pollution in the land. Revelation 21, 8. They are polluted. And I'm not talking about environment. I'm talking about physical and spiritual. They're doing everything the Ten Commandments tells them not to do. <coughs> Therefore, shall the land mourn. We read that in Leviticus 26. I love how God matches what our study is to what we read as a family. Everyone that deals therein shall language. Leviticus 26. In Revelation 6.6. 6, with the beast of the field. So the beast suffer because of the humans. With the fowls of heaven. 
Yea, the fish of the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. No food. No animals. No working. No, listen, animals back then were the tractors. Were the mechanical. Yet, let no man strive. Nor reprove another. Don't you yell at another. Don't you tell another to get right. For thy people are as they that strive with the priest. Titus 3, 9. Deuteronomy 17, 12. They're fighting with the priest. Therefore shalt thou fall in the day. And the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night. And I will destroy thy mother, Revelation 12, 1 and 2, Israel. So there's a problem with the people, there's a problem with the priests, and there's problems with the prophets. In Israel, there were plenty of prophets. I think Jezebel had 400 of them. And Elijah dealt with them on Mount Carmel. Were they proper prophets? No. They were the prophets of Baal. They had plenty of priests in northern Israel. Were they the priests of God? Nope, they weren't in Jerusalem. So what we're looking at is a worldly satanic priest and prophets in Israel north. We're not talking about Judah. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge and run that back down to verse 1. It's not that... You know, they've gone to college and they got all this education. That's not the knowledge God's talking about. Thou has rejected knowledge, the priest and the prophet. <laughs> Excuse me. They do not want to know God. Verse 1. You can have all the knowledge and hanging on all your walls, but if you don't know God, I today with Christian schools in America, Christian school, you can come out and have nothing to know of God, and not even what His Word. I will also reject thee. Wait a minute, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee. What's that word also imply? They have already rejected God. By not having God's knowledge. See, when you read the word of God, read the word. I will, that's God speaking, also reject thee, because thou hast rejected knowledge. The knowledge goes back to verse 1. It's the knowledge of God. They don't want to know the Ten Commandments. They don't want to know Leviticus. They want the happy, flowery, lily kind of... Get yourself a palm leaf, uh, send Christmas presents, and put the tree up, and have little bunnies kind of God. And that's in my jury, your churches today. That thou shalt be no priest to me. They weren't priests. Eli is an example. Read Malachi 2.7. Seeing that... Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, the priest, I will also forget thy children. That knowledge, Proverbs 1 7. As they were increased, they were given to children, 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 so they sinned against me. Therefore will I change their glory into shame. God acknowledges as, as far as priests, even though they're wrong priests. They could have done right. They could have gotten right. The knowledge of God would have been, oh, wait a minute, we got the wrong priest. We need to call the Levites up here. We're in the wrong place. We're not supposed to be going to uh, the, the calves. We're supposed to be going to Jerusalem. But they rejected all that. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore will I change their glory into shame. They eat up the sin of my people. 
Well, there were offerings that you brought for your sin. And there were certain offerings were allowed to be eaten by the priest. These people are taking their offerings not in the right place, not the right people, and they're eating up the offering. Paying money for their sins, indulgences. Living off the sin of the people. And they set their heart on their iniquity. Now, is that the people's iniquity or is that the priest's iniquity? So they're living off the sins. They're not trying to get the people to do right. Sort of like a certain church. The more you sin, the more we make. And there shall be like people, like priests. <laughs> I just read in English, that's wrong. Sorry. From the King James 6011 English. I will punish them for their ways. And reward them for their doing. Reward them their doing. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. Now, if you're involved in your sins, you're involved making money off sin. How can you make money off sin? Selling booze, selling cigarettes, gambling. Isn't that all sin? You're making a profit off it? God will get you. If Jesus said, if a man looketh upon a woman of the lust after in his heart has already committed adultery with her without a sexual act, what do you think you're going to stand up there, Mr. Christian bartender, when you have given a drink to someone who has killed someone on the way home or has destroyed their own family? You think you're going to sit at the judgment seat of Christ and say, well, you know, I had to make a living? You think you're going to escape the judgment of God when you sold booze to people that, that maybe children and, and the wife or the, the husband has been uh, lack of funds for bills and everything? Better realize you are sowing seed, either good seed or wicked seed. And you, those plants are going to come to sprout. And they're going to produce nice little flowers, and they're going to produce seeds, which is going to grow even more. And the funny thing I learned last week or a couple weeks ago is if you take seeds like an apple tree or orange tree, and you plant those seeds in the ground, those fruits are going to taste bitter. Be careful what you're planting. Be careful what seeds you've got. Now they say, sow your wild oats. Yeah? Wait till the crops come in. And there shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways and reward them their doom. For they shall not eat. Oh, wait, excuse me. For they shall eat and not have enough. That's not the condition of America yet. That's the condition in India. With a whole bunch of sacred cows running around. Oh, please give money to these people who are starving in India. See these little kids with flies around and their belly buttons sticking out there. You can tell all their ribs. You got Philly Malin running around. You got hamburgers right behind you. Kill one of the cows and feed the people. Oh, that could be grandma. Get out of your religion and get into Jesus Christ. And then you will have food. Not have enough. That's not the condition of America today yet. But if we keep on going the route of Israel and Judah, remember we went through Lamentations? The woman would take her baby and, and, and put him in boiling water and eat him and still be hungry. They shall commit whoredom. Uh-oh. Was that chapter 1? And shall not increase. Going to go something wrong with the seeds and the eggs of fertilization. Going to be no children. 
today the thing is called, you know, safe sex and abortion. One day you're going to be sorry when you realize the population of America has derated itself and the enemies will come in for lack of Americans. Because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. No one took care of the problem. So God will take care of it. Proverbs 23, 21. Whoredom, chapter 1. And wine, chapter 2, I think it was. New wine, grape juice, take away the heart. Why you like that? A whore will change your heart away from God. Wine will take your your heart away from even a new wine. Remember what we read in chapter two? They're taking the wine and selling it to the enemies of God. My people ask counsel at the stocks or their stocks. A piece of wood, a totem pole, an idol. A Christmas tree. And their staff. That's Rambo Mancy. R-A-B-B-O-M-A-N-C-Y. Isaiah 44, 19, 20. I mean, after all, if Noah, I mean Noah, if Moses and Aaron could have done their staff, why can't we? And their staff declares unto them. So they go up to a staff that well, tell me what, what I'm going to do in the future. So like the, the newspaper. Oh, I'm Sagittarius. For the spirit of whoredoms. Oh, a spirit of whoredoms. Did you know that there's something of a spirit of whoredoms? That the Bible says you're to try every spirit? Has caused them to err. But we've been reading about the whoredoms. Four chapters of it. Errors to go wrong. And have gone a whoring from under their God. They're doing it right in front of God. They sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains. That's not where God told them to go. So you got a beer company that has a picture of a mountain. And you know the stupid advertisement I see now? They have something about being born. This beer has been born. <laughs> you really took John 3 out of context, didn't you? Really. And burn incense upon the hill. Where were they supposed to burn that? And who was supposed to burn it? Under oaks and poplars and elms. Because the shadow thereof is good. That's what you call... Man, I just had to tip my tongue now. English people worship the trees and little spirits in the trees and all that. I can't think of the name of it now. Druids. You think Druids is a new religion? No, it's back in BC 785. High places 98 times in the Bible. One New Testament passage, Ephesians 6:12. And what they're doing is they're doing Babel. We're going to get to God by our own means, but they're not building anything. We'll just take God's mountain. We'll we'll, we'll get to God by climbing His mountain. So why do people try to climb all these mountains? For religious purposes, according to the Bible. Because if I can conquer that big wide mountain up there, look at all the things I can do. Yeah, now you got to get down, idiot. You spent all that time and effort to get up there, now what? For what? Now you got to get down. Therefore your daughters shall commit whoredom. And your spouses shall commit adultery. So you see the sacrifice in the mountains, the sacrifice on the hills, and under the trees is related to the whoredoms and the and adultery of the daughters of the children of Israel.
This is sexual worship, the, the vestal virgins that you found in Corinth. Virgins set aside for God at the temple worship. That's what's going on here. Sex is nothing new. Israel was going to these tops of the mountains to worship God while their wives and their daughters were having whoredom and adultery situations with men. The, uh, Eli's boys were doing that at the temple. They were grabbing the food before they were supposed to grab it, and they were laying with the women at the temple, the Bible says in 1 Samuel. So when you read Hosea 2, go get yourself a whore, marry her, get yourself a adulterous woman, chapter 3. That is the spiritual condition of the children of Israel. So, isn't God in the woods? Isn't God on the lake? Isn't God in the trees? Yeah, and they're also having sexual relations. What's your problem? <clears throat> Study the Druid sometime. I will not punish your daughters when they commit whoredom. Ooh, doesn't that sound good? Nor your spouses when they commit adultery. Ooh, God's allowing it. For themselves are separated with whores. That's a nice word, God. Well, what the New Bible say? And they sacrifice with harlots. Separated. Sacrifice. Isn't that words that you're supposed to have for God? You take the banking system. Redemption. There are words in the banking system that are used in the Bible for a soul that they use for money. Sickening. Therefore, the people that doeth not doeth doth I don't know I would say that one doeth doth not understand shall fall. They continue to go the way they're going. God doesn't need to step in. They're just going to fall by themselves. They'll get diseases. They'll get people who mistreat them, and they'll die, and end up in hell. And God does not have to lift a finger. They'll kill their own selves. I mean, do you really think that God gave AIDS? God told men, a man and a woman, that's it. No man and man, no women and women, no man with animals. So they went out and experimented with animals, and they got themselves a worldwide disease. Monkeying around. Didn't mean that. Well, how come we got AIDS? Because you did what God told you not to do. And God did not have to lift a finger. You ought not be putting needles in your body. He thought that was his tattoo. Well, there's other needles. And then you share the same needle and you get the disease. You ever ask yourself a question when it comes to sexual diseases? Now, I've been married twice. One wife died. I'm pretty active sexually, if I can just say that. How come I, how come I don't have no diseases? Why is it always that the sexually transmitted diseases happen to those who step outside the marriage bed? What is that bond? What is that barrier there? That a husband and wife can be together many, many years. They can be together the first night the honeymoon night or they can be together years and years and years and years and naturally they don't get no sexually transmitted diseases at all how is it that when a when a man or woman steps outside of a marriage and boom there it is and then sexually transmitted diseases can be passed on to your spouse and to your children and maybe your grandchildren You didn't think there was sex in Hosea 4. Where did you? There it is. You get involved in wrong sexual practices that God has not prescribed. The marriage bed is honorable all, but whoremongers and I think adulterers, God will judge. Here it is, Hosea 4, 14. And God doesn't have to lift a finger. You doing wrong will do your own deeds.
There, though thou, Israel, played a harlot, yet let not Judah offend. Oh, there's Judah. Judah, you better be careful. You want to ask him how Judah should be careful the, the following books that we just finished reading and studying? We didn't get a detail, detailed account of what happened to Israel as much as the detailed account we got with Judah in Jerusalem. And come not ye unto Gilgal, neither go ye up to Beth Avon, nor swear the Lord liveth. There's no belief. Why say it? 365 days, 66 sometimes in some years. There are people who stand before a man or a woman and swear before God that their, their vows will last to death to their part and they don't believe in God and they don't believe what they're saying. God says don't do it. Don't go to places and make your vows. Don't go to a special sanctuary. Don't go climb the mountains. Don't go on your pilgrimage if you just no belief because I'm going to hold you to it. You have been called a volunteer to go into a military service. You're in the rough of it. Things are flying over your head. There's kabooms. There's bombs. There's missiles. There's bullets. There's, there's the enemy. Oh, God, if you get me out of this, I'll get saved. I'll go home and be a preacher. Don't do it. Don't promise it if you're not going to do it. If be not deceived, God's not marked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. It'll be even worse if you're lost and never do get saved because those words will judge you at the great white throne of judgment. Ha, you prayed to me. Don't tell me you don't believe in me. Imagine, uh, imagine an atheist crying out Jesus Christ as a cuss and then turning to Jesus Christ and say, well, I never believed in you. Well, wait a minute, why'd you use my name? I don't believe there's God. And then you go, God, you know, boulder damn it. Why'd you say if you didn't believe in God? We say all kinds of things and we don't believe it. And yet it will be held accountable to you to what your big mouth has said. Your heart was made to cry out to God. For Israel, now here's where you get the expression. Israel slides back as a backsliding heifer. He went backsliding. He's a backslider. Comes out of Hosea chapter 4, verse 16. Isaiah 14, 4, it's an unusual fall. What? No, Isaiah 14, 4, it's an unusual fall. I got You go back to Isaiah 14, verse 4. There's another mention in that backsliding heifer. He's like, I forget how they say it, but something about he's on a ramp. Supposed to be going up, he slides backward. Now the Lord will feed them as a lamb in a large place. Large a lot of grass. Psalms 23. But right now they're being judged. But they'll be together one day as we finish chapter uh, 3 last night. Now, There's a group of people in America, in Utah, that proclaim to be from the tribe Ephraim. When they come with their bikes to your door, open your Bible to Hosea chapter 4, verse 17, and say, Are you of Ephraim? And they say, No, they're lying. Yes, we're of Ephraim. Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. Bye. Bible told me to leave you alone. And we're not done with Ephraim, but well, as we studied as well. Ephraim, the son of Joseph, is rebuked in this book. Here he's joined him. He's married himself to idols. Their drink, Ephraim's drink, is sour. They have committed whoredom continually with their idols. 
her rulers with shame do love give you. Give me, give me. Give me, give me, give me, give me. We read that in chapter 3. Give me, give me, give me. Me, 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 me. The wind has bound her up in her wings. And they shall be ashamed because of their sacrifices. And that wouldn't be the sacrifices to God. That would be the sacrifices to their idols. And they'll be ashamed before when they stand before God at the great white throne judgment. When it's all laid down on the line, what you've done. It's not going to escape you. It'll come back and kick you in the butt. 